Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Unreal CLR. What exactly is that? Well, it is the magic sauce that a number of developers out there are looking for because they want to use the C-sharp programming language with the Unreal game engine. And that's what it does. It exposes the .NET core to Unreal Engine, and it kind of wraps around Unreal Engine so you can use those entities from .NET, which basically means you can use the C-sharp programming language, or if you so wish, the F-sharp programming language, or technically VB.NET if you're one of those people, with Unreal Engine. This is an open source project. It is available up on GitHub. It is available right there. I will, of course, link that in the article down below. The article will take you step by step through everything we are about to do today so you can get up and running, at least their tests, etc., and you can see C-sharp controlling Unreal Engine. So a quick overview of what we're all about here. Features include host loading, integration and management during the life, uh, lifetime of the engine, dynamic loading, unloading, isolation and independently resolving of user assemblies at runtime, on the fly access and execution of managed functionality through blueprints, runtime exception handling and tracing, continuously evolving framework for access to the engine API for managed code written in idiomatic C sharp, high performance interop through generated IL code and utilization of um, blittable data types, uh, support of .NET facilities including hardware accelerated math with transparent remapping to vector types of the engine, support for .NET tools for debugging and profiling such as JetBrains product line, uh, DN Spy debugger and others, full independence from the compilation pipeline of assemblies with support for NuGet packages, analyzers and generators, automatic project packaging for standalone distributions, carefully handcrafted source code for the best maintainability and performance, uh, extensive unit testing to ensure robustness and consistency, and distributed as a plugin that does not not require rebuilding the engine, thank goodness, because that is something that takes a lot of time and a heck of a lot of space. And the source code is fully documented. Plus, it is available for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. What you're going to see in this version, though, is going to be the Windows version of how to do things. Well, really, where that's going to change is just this piece right here, your compilation tool chain. I'm going to be using Visual Studio 2019 with the C++ profile all set up already. On other platforms, obviously, it's going to be a different setup. So we are very much looking at the um, the the, uh, vi the the Windows version of things today. So I'm going to come up here first off, and we are just going to grab the repository right there. Click that guy, copy it to your buffer, and put it somewhere you're not going to lose it. Definitely don't want it to be a temporary space. So I'm going to put mine in the temp directory here. Just do a git clone and then pull down that address. That's going to grab everything we need. You're going to want to have had .NET SDK already installed. The .NET um, SDK is available for all the three major platforms. Uh, and you can tell if you've got it installed, go to a command prompt, type the words .NET. If it works, you've got it installed. If it doesn't, you don't. All right, so there we go. So we just traded the folder. It's Unreal something or other. Unreal CLR like so. Uh, switch into that. You're going to find another folder in there called install. Just CD into that one as well. And now do a .NET, oops, .NET run like so. Let me... Let me just zoom that in so you can actually see what I'm doing there. So do a .NET run and just let that go. This is going to do its stuff. Okay, now before you do this, go ahead and, or at this point in time, literally right now, you're going to have wanted to create an Unreal Engine project. I've already done one, so we're going to head over here. You're going to see I am in Unreal Engine. This is a new project I created just to save some time. It is quite literally a blank project of type Blueprint. And uh, create that guy. Come in here. And grab it, show in folder. It's going to show you where its location is. We'll just come up here and we will copy that URL right now. We're going to need that during this installation process. So do create yourself a Unreal Engine project before continuing past this point because you are going to have to paste in the path to it right there. So now you've done it. And yep, compile and install the tests. Installation will delete all stuff. That's cool. And now it is going to do its thing. I don't remember exactly how long this particular part took. It's, it's not outrageous, but it takes a, at least a few seconds. I'm going to pause it while it runs. So, yeah. Okay, so I will be back when this is done running. There's nothing further that you have to do until it finishes. It's just going to pop up some windows in the meantime. <laughs> okay, I shouldn't have paused it because it is literally done. But we're not we're not out of the woods yet because there's going to be a build process. You don't have to build the entire engine, but you do have to build the plugin. So go ahead and launch this guy in Unreal Engine. Again, use the current version, uh, 4.25.3. And would have said you'd like to rebuild? Yes, you would. So let it do the, the build process. This can take a, a couple of minutes at least. So I'm going to pause while it's running. And by the way, if you don't get this process, it's because you don't have the native build chain installed correctly. So let this run. 
And here we go. We are now loaded and we are using uh, C Sharp, but you can't really tell as of yet. So what we want to do is come up here and we're going to open up a level. They are in the folder tests and we're going to open up the level tests. Now, if you go ahead and run this, it's going to run one of the tests. See here, this is all being controlled by the C Sharp programming language. Some pretty cool stuff there. Um, but what you want to do is just go ahead. We'll pause that guy and we'll come over here. We'll go blueprints and we'll go to the open level blueprint section right here. And here we are. So you can sort of see what is controlling this guy right there. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'll do a full stop on that. So you can see the link up process. All right, here we go. So you see the system's coming in. You're grabbing a value here. You're passing in the namespace and so on. But the key things here are the find managed function. This is stuff being uh, provided by the Unreal CLR framework. So if I go ahead and actually double click that, this is opening up the C++ from the plugin. This is binding. This is the, the little bit of where blueprints bind to managed code. And you can actually jump in here and see the code behind it. But don't worry, you don't have to work at this level. But if you're wondering how some of the magic worked, this is how the magic worked. By the way, you'll also see that the code is under the LGPL v3 license. Now, what that actually means is that the code if you modify the code itself, you have to release your changes that you've made to it. So if you make changes to the um, Unreal CLR project at, at all, you'll, you'll need to release those licenses right there. But you can see this is the code controlling these extensions to the blueprint system. And what this is ultimately doing is launching managed functions. So this is how you bind your code over in your project. We'll look at the project in just a couple of seconds. Uh, but if we come on back here, all right, one sec. You see here, it's mashing a couple of things together, test namespace and system. So test namespace is brought in here. And then the system that you're hooking up is bought, being brought in right here. Now, this is the key one. This is um, an enumeration of all of the different projects that exist. I'll show you those in just a second. But if you're interested, they're available here in an, as an asset. Scroll on down here, you're going to find uh, test systems enumeration. You see here, it's a list of all of the various different tests that are available. Uh, you don't really need to come in there. But what you do need to do is select it over here as a variable test systems. And right here, this gives you access to the various different options. So for example, if we wanted to do, we're looking at the instance mess static example right now. Uh, let's go over to, uh, there's an audio one here. Let's do the audio one. Where's the audio? Audio playback. So here we are. Now we'll go ahead and play that. And there you can hear some sound. I'm not capturing sound, so let me just turn that up. There you go. So as an example, that is how you switch between the projects that are available. Just just change out this guy. But at the same time, if you're creating your own project, this is the approach you take. Basically, you're, you, well, you could basically just go down and call your um, execute managed function on your function. You don't need to go through this elaborate setup. This is what allows it to be driven by that enumeration of all the projects that are available. Now, you may be a little curious, okay, where is this project? Where is this code that is being run from the C-sharp side of things? Well, that is why you put the thing in a uh, reliable and persistent location, such as temp. All right, so going to come up here, and it is Unreal CLR. We're just going to come in here, and we'll just do a search for... C sharp proj files. There you go. So there you can see all of the various different project files that we're interested in. The one that we are running here, this is an example of a, a game written in C sharp. This is our test that we we're looking at. Here is the source code. So you would make your own source code project in your own standalone thing. Again, you can use your own package manager, such like NuGet, but your entire coding process is going to take place outside of Unreal Engine. You, you, you do the coding behind the scenes. So you can see some of the examples that we looked at. Uh, so for example, there was audio playback. Yeah, let's just zoom that down. Come on, go away, go away, go away. Here we go. So here we can see how it works. Very simple. You're, you're handling it in uh, various different callbacks. So we've got on begin play and we have on end play. Those are going to be called obviously at the end of the play, hitting the play button and the beginning of hitting the play button. And here you can see just straight out C sharp code being run. And that's all being provided. They've, they've, they've mapped the entire framework out for you so you can use these things in C Sharp. So you can see, for example, here is an actor class, but you're working in C Sharp code instead of like the U actor C++ code. And you'll also notice so if I come here and do an alarm sound dot, we get full IntelliSense on all of the objects that we're working with. So when we work in C Sharp, we work in it this way. And I believe this is the entry point. Yeah, so here you can see world end, World begin, I kind of said that backwards, begin and end. That is the, your straight out entry point style for creating these things. The other one we were looking at earlier, the static instance mesh. So you can see here again on begin play, 
on end play and then on tick on tick was going to be called every single frame and then yeah this is basically the the guts of your controller what this one is doing is dynamically creating new actors so you see it's creating all of those cubes that show up in the world so if we head on back over here and we switch test systems back to instant static meshes and we play that guy actually well we're not gonna get anything here so let's get out of here but we play here, you can see there are all of the meshes that are being created. And again, this is the actual code that is managing that. So that is kind of in a nutshell how Unreal CLR ultimately works. Uh, the cool thing is we head back on over here. Uh, okay, so we come down here, you're gonna find there is a decent manual. There is a full API reference of all of the classes that have been bound over to C Sharp. So as you saw, the actor class, for example, is completely implemented in C Sharp. Uh, so they've mapped it to the appropriate types and the data types, etc. So you do feel like you are working in the C Sharp side of things. Um, then at the same time, the manual will walk you through the process. Also, the entry points into your code. So for example, here we see in C Sharp, these are all of the various different life cycle callbacks that are available on world end. And sorry, I'm doing it every time. On world begin, on world end, on world pre physics tick, during physics tick, after physics tick, and post update tick are shown there. And where's tick? Okay, I'm confused. And then we also have the ability to uh, map to uh, or run blueprint functions as well. So you can actually have some of your code implemented in blueprints and call that code from C Sharp itself. So in a nutshell, that is it. Uh, the, the process of binding your project to it isn't immediately intuitive. So I would highly recommend look at the way that they have done things to literally just follow through the steps I came in here, come in here, let it install the test things, open up the test level. And then what you wanna do again is go into all right, I lost my mouse cursor. Go into your blueprints, open up the level blueprints, and this is kind of, this is the genesis. This is what fires things off, and then ultimately the code that is all being run here is available in your install folder in the subdirectory of source managed tests. And there you go, you start playing with the code right there before you start with the ambitious task of, you know, setting up your own project behind the scenes. But there really shouldn't be a lot involved. The key thing is you're going to want to do the evocation like they have done right here. Um, this is, again, a little bit overly complicated because they're allowing you uh, to choose uh, basically from all of those enumerations, all of these different values here. So that's why you're seeing what you are seeing here. But they're calling back on event tick. And then they're calling that managed function. The, the oh, so that's why there was no tick. It's being called right here. So anyways, that is it. Uh, that is the Unreal CLR. It enables you to use C Sharp as your underlying programming language with the Unreal Engine. Now, again, you don't have a whole lot of in-engine integration. You do have the ability to call into Blueprints and call out from Blueprints. But your code is going to exist in a separate project outside. But truth of the matter is, that's kind of how it works for C++ these days. Anyways, it's probably the way that most people are going to want it. It's a problem. The only thing that's kind of unfortunate or I would love to see is the ability to just basically have your your C sharp files and your CS project right in here and click into them and go from there but it's not it's not set up that way unfortunately it's it's all done out of another directory structure and I do find uh in going through the documentation or going through the materials, that link between where your code is and this, it's a little bit ambiguous. Um, so that's one of those things where the documentation could definitely improve. Basically, here's how to create your own new first project. Um, but other than that, it is incredibly well documented. It does basically expose pretty much the entirety of Unreal Engine out to C Sharp. So I think it does what the majority of you would like to see. So anyways, let me know. Let me know if you have worked with Unreal CLR and if, maybe if I'm missing something on how to integrate your own code. If there's a better way, let me know in the comments down below. And if not, what do you think of this project? Do you want to work with C Sharp with Unreal Engine? Uh, also, apparently, the uh, rumor has it that for Unreal Engine 5, um, they, they bought the Socom script guys and apparently they're working on their own scripting language Lisa Rumor says. So be interesting to see where that goes, but it's definitely cool. This is a solution that does get C Sharp as a programming option with Unreal Engine. Uh, it does seem to be very actively under development. So do be sure to check out their GitHub page. Again, the documentation is all quite thorough as well. And if you look here, it is being updated pretty consistently for sure. So uh, that's Unreal CLR, C Sharp, F Sharp in Unreal Engine. Let me know what you think. I'll talk to you all later and goodbye.